Hello, good morning. This is Jelle growing bonsai and this is a Zalkova that I'm growing out in my garden and it is getting in the way here on the walkway. Um, it is still very more early in the morning and that's a perfect time to take cuttings. So I'm going to take this branch, clip it off and I'm going to find all the cuttings that I can and put them in a tray to grow out over the year. Yes, I can walk again. Hey, this is Jelle, Growing Bonsai, and today we are rooting Zogova cuttings and following through the season to show how they root and how they grow, and the video will be released at the end of the season. Now, Zogova, this is a branch I just clipped off in my garden, and why do I want to root Zogova? Well, Zogova is one of the great species for bonsai. It is great for bonsai because it grows very vigorously. Look at that. This is all growth of the last couple of weeks. Um, but it also can make very, very short internodes, very fine branching. So once you have the bulk of your tree set, you can create a very nice refined canopy with fine twigging, fine branching, and that's why these are great for bonsai. Now, rooting Zokova is nothing special. It's not difficult, it is very easy. All you need, clippers, pot of substrate, rooting hormone, and one secret that I'm going to show you later in this video. Now, how do you go about it? You collect a branch. Um, I've collected this branch in the very early morning. It is still early morning. And why do I do it in the early morning? Well, very easy. Now the branches are full of sap, ready to go, and you don't need to rehydrate them. Um, that's a problem, of course, in late afternoon when the sun has been on the tree, it is quite dehydrated. Of course, you don't have to cut off a branch this size. Um, I just wanted this whole branch to be gone, so I took a whole branch. But what you're after is the fresh growth of this year. So if you take a branch like this, this is all from this year. And how do I know this is all from this year? Basically, there are leaves. It seems like a very simple thing, but of course, a branch that has leaves, the leaves are all from this year. So Kova is a deciduous species. It throws off its leaves in fall. So every place on the branch where there's a leaf, there's growth of this year, as long as it is not a side branch, of course. Well, this is the extension of this year. Now, what do you use for cutting? It is very tempting to say I'm going to use this part of the branch. This looks very nice and vigorous. Um, there's a lot of distance, nice big leaves. This must be the best part for cutting. But that's not the case. What I like to use for cutting is the base of this tree. And the reason is quite simply here, the nodes are very close to each other. That is what I'm after. Now, many people who have bonsai realize that branches don't grow. Well, they don't grow at a spot where there's no bud. And buds only form at the spot where there are side leaves. For a Zokova that's not completely true, but in general it is. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to clip off the branch right at the point where it started this year. When collecting cuttings, there are a couple of things that you need to watch out for. First of all, you want a branch that has been growing quite strongly, is healthy and has no diseases. You may have noticed in one of the cuttings, I have actually a few holes in the leaves. This is not because of disease, but this is damage from frost earlier this year. Next to that, I like to use branches that are current year's growth before they get completely woody. So mid-spring is a good time to take cuttings. This is where last year the growth stopped and I'm going to clip right above this. So this is a branch from this year where I'm cutting now. This is still young enough that it roots quite quickly and quite easily. I don't think it will take more than four to six weeks for this branch to start rooting. Then I like to take cuttings of about five to 10 centimeters, so two to four inches. I clip off all the leaves, but make sure that you do not disturb the buds that are sitting here in the elbow between the leaf and the branch itself. I leave one leaf on the top. You could do two, but Zokova has very big leaves and I don't want a lot of leaf material in there. And if they're still too big, you can just cut off the tip of the branch. This is a perfect cutting for planting up. Of course, you need to dip it into rooting hormone fairly quickly after cutting it off so that the fresh tissue doesn't have a chance to dry out and can quickly absorb the rooting hormone. I take a bit of rooting hormone and this is just a commercial rooting hormone available in normal grow stores. And I just dip the end of the cutting nice through the rooting hormone. And then I just let it sit for a couple of minutes so the rooting hormone can draw into the living tissue. For the other cutting, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to clip the end off, going to remove the root leaves. Leaves 
will very easily start rotting, which is why it is good to remove most of the leaves and just leave one or two on. This, for me, I could root it as cutting as well, but I'm not going to because I don't like the big distances between the individual leaves. To facilitate planting these cuttings, I always poke holes into the substrate. What this does, it creates a placeholder, so if I do this for the whole pot now, I know where the cuttings are going to be and they're all at e equal distances from each other, but more importantly, this way you also reduce the amount of rooting hormone that you push off the cutting when you put it into the substrate. With the, with the holes made, you just take a cutting and you gently slide it into one of the holes. Making sure the leaves are pointing towards the inside because of the secret ingredient that I'm using later on. In practice, I don't usually let the cutting sit all that long, um, but this reduces potentially the success rate of your cuttings. Now look at the number of nodes that are here on this very short cutting. This makes a really, really good cutting. The leaf is also not all that big. Nice. Try to find nice and vigorous branches to work with. Typically this means you use cuttings from branches that are high up in the tree. Branches that grow vertical or in the top of the crown are usually more vigorous than the lower ones. Look at this difference. This cutting and this one. They're from both the same age. Both started growing this spring. This is thicker, it is longer, it's more vigorous than the lower one. These will root as well. But this will root a lot easier. Right, the whole pot is full. I'm now going to use water to really connect these cuttings to the substrate by watering strongly. The substrate will become a little bit fluid. Well, actually, the substrate is flushed into the holes. And after that, I'm going to use my secret weapon. Vermiculite in the pot is one component of the cuttings. Then the rooting hormone. And the last is a little magic greenhouse. Basically a small Ziploc bag or any other self-closing bag can do. You place the whole pot in there, you close the baggie, and then you let it just sit in the shade one hour, maybe an hour and a half in the early morning or the very late afternoon of sun. And for the rest, you just wait for six weeks. Then you open the baggie and you look inside. Hopefully then you'll find happy, healthy cuttings that have started to root. Second week of July and really great news. Let's open this up a little bit so I can show you what I am seeing. Through the baggie it's not so clear, but once these are uncovered, you'll see why I'm quite happy so far. Have to be careful not to damage them. But these cuttings are now really starting to root. Look, there is new growth. There's big buds here on this cutting. Um, yeah, quite pleased. Another few weeks. I'll leave the baggie open a little bit, but these have started as a root and it looks promising. Now, what I'm going to do now is something you should not repeat. It is the last week of July and I'm a little bit fed up with all these pots and containers with cuttings and everything. So I'm going to take this apart. This is not recommended. If you do this at home and you really care about these cuttings, um, wait until early spring to do this, right? You can just leave them in this pot for the time being. But I want to see how many have rooted. Um, in this case, I don't think many of them have. Many of them have died, that's for sure. This one is dead. 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 Now it gets critical. This one is dead. 
This one is dead. Wow. And this one? Yeah, dead. This one? Dead. This is a bad example. Dead. This is a dead one. This one? Hey, we've got our roots. This one is alive. This one has a fat butt. I think this one is alive. This one has a living leaf and this one has extension growth. So now I've taken out all the dead ones and I think I have four rooted ones, which is a really, really poor result, but it is a result. Let's see where these have roots as well. Bit tricky. Make sure that they don't break off if they have roots. So now back to checking. This is one with roots. This one was the other one, the first one with roots. This one actually, it has a living leaf, but no roots whatsoever. So I'm going to toss this down as not rooted because I just don't want to waste any more time on this. This one has very, very nice roots. And what I'm going to do, don't do this at home unless it is spring. I'm going to shorten it a little bit because I don't actually want this very long extension growth. So I have effectively three successful cuttings out of this whole pot. Now, I'll pot, I'll pot these up. I don't really need them, but you know what? Maybe somebody will be happy with them once I give them away. Um, it does bring me to the end of this video. I'm not gonna do anything special to these. I'm just going to plop them back in the pot. Um, yeah, basically these are just still in the process of rooting properly, getting established. And I'll look at them again in spring. And if they're alive, I'll probably do a giveaway or, yeah, you know, by that time probably somebody has come by at my place and said, can I have these cuttings, please? There we go. Well, this was Jelle, um, growing bonsai with how to root Zokova from cutting. Um, you see it can be done. I didn't pay enough attention. Sloppy, hot spring, whatever excuse, not all of them rooted. Not even nearly all of them rooted. Um, I know you can get up to 100% because I've had up to 100% in the past. Doesn't matter. It's just to show you this is how you can root Sokova cuttings. Um, even if you only get 3 out of 20 at home, that's still 3 new trees for nothing, right? Well, this was Jelle. Growing bonsai. And I recommend you keep doing that. Grow bonsai. See you next time. And thank you for watching.